could this main sheet system be the eureka moment of AC-37 in the same way that the raised mast or lower decks were of AC-36? Possibly. I certainly speculated when we didn't see any development of Team New Zealand's main sheet systems in the early part of this cycle that they could be delaying deployment of a new system until they thought it was too late for the other teams to copy. It's like half twelve now and um, just been working on the Luna Rossa video but <laughs> today on the recon for Team New Zealand there's just this really interesting clip. The recon guys have found a great perspective looking down into the boat watching them trigger through all the systems. So you just see look right of screen, foil lifts up, mass rotates to starboard so that is a conjunction of mass rotation with the foil lift. Do we know if people are just pressing buttons for that or it's automated? No. Um, what's also interesting about this mast is how it's rotating. What we can see is this is a extended mast. So the mast ball sits up in here and you can see the area which is extended here. Um, so the mast ball must sit up inside. But what is twisting this mast? Well, we see see this image of the mast and you can see it's got this um, kind of brace below it. And at first I thought they often carry the mast around with a little um, carrier that hooks onto the mast ball on the trolley. But in retrospect, having looked at this footage of the boat, I'm pretty sure that this sits below deck and um, is what connects up the linkages for the mast rotation system with a mass rotation system below the deck and a main sheet system partially below the deck this really harks back to what Luna Rossa had with their structural beam below the deck which was a carrier for all the main sheet systems and the mass rotation could Emirates Team New Zealand be doing the same thing well I don't think it makes sense to necessarily link mass rotation and main sheet in the same way physically anymore because the rules allow you to link controls electronically and we've spoken about that quite a lot. There's still a structural element to this. Remember, Luna Rossa were the team who didn't have to run backstays in the last cup and that was largely due to the fact they had this huge beam running below the deck which transferred the loads which come from the main sheet pulling up to the mast which is pushed down into the deck. Now the rules have changed for this cup and got rid of the running backstays. The potential that while the teams don't need to link mast rotation and the main traveller, the potential that while the teams don't need to link mast rotation and the main traveller due to being able to create that function electronically, there could still be an argument for doing it for structural reasons. Now we can't see what's below the deck, but I think that is certainly an interesting question. So a few clips of what's going on. The funny thing is you can hear talk in this video and for ages of trying to figure out what was going on until I realised I was listening to some guys reversing a truck um, near the camera guys. So you can see the main sheet system just starting to um, move here at the back. Okay, foils goes down so they were on port. Um, and now they're tacking to starboard. What do they do for this tack? So <coughs> you can see the differential in these skins systems moving around. Clear. The reason this carrier is so interesting is because they've taken down the kind of angle of sheeting adjustment from between the clue of the sails down onto the traveller for the main sheet. Now, this in itself is interesting because it removes some of the hydraulics from between the sails as well as removing the main sheet from between the sails, which the other boats and even Tirahutai were doing up until recently. But the really interesting bit, which really differentiates this system from what all the other teams have, is that it's got completely independent main sheets for each skin. All the other systems we've seen to date have a single master ramp for the main sheet and then they rely on some sort of passive um, yoke or slipping or strops to distribute the load from that single main sheet 
to the two skins. The distribution, the load between those two skins was passive and the teams didn't really have any control over that. But this system from MX Team Zealand has two completely separate main sheet tensions for each skin. For the first time really allowing those two skins in the twin skin setup to be trimmed pretty independently. Now the only main sheet control which isn't separated for each of the skin is the Traveller and well I can't really think of any scenario where you'd want one skin at one end of the Traveller and one skin at the other but everything else is separated and on its own control. You can see the two differentials in the sheet so at the moment um, I think they have just put down the starboard foil lifted the port foil so the port tack the windward skin is moved back because that's obviously on the inside of the curve um, but it's actually eased laying it back onto the leeward skin the leeward skin is forward because it's on the outside of the curve so it needs to have um, kind of more camber in it um, but it's sheeted down harder to stiffen up that um, that leech and what we see next is them go through a bit of, of an easing but going forward with these rhymes so increasing the sheeting angle and then a series of pumping mechanisms where they look like they're pumping the leeward skin mostly and a bit of a pump of the women's skin and it's just moving forward increasing that sheet angle for a more powerful sail but slightly more eased as well um, and then I think when they go to the tap, when we see this back up, um, so when we see them both back up at once, quickly, always precedes, is like either during or preceding the tack. And I think that's, they, um, they flatten off the skins and pull them tight as they go through the eye of the wind to reduce the drag. And then afterwards you can see they reintroduce the, um, the camber with the with the offset in the two skins this is interesting because on all the recon footage before even though we talked a lot about the different skins whenever you looked at people's clue boards it didn't look like there was a lot of offset whereas this you know i was saying on the other systems the offset was actually just two strops moving over one another whereas this um you know it looks like they've got very precise direct movement on the offset between the two skins now obviously this has some huge benefits for the sail control in that you can get the um, leeches of the sail closer together it also means you can sheet the skins independently however there will be some drawbacks it's effectively one extra hydraulic cylinder then all that weight is on the track being moved up and down which takes energy and finally the way that the sheeting angle moves on that track means that track is loaded quite differently depending on whether you're sheeting aft or sheeting forward. That means the track has to be reinforced and possibly run in conjunction with another mass further forward to take the torsional loads. That All that extra reinforcement means weight. So there must be a trade-off here. Well, it's really interesting to see and a completely new concept for the main sheet system literally flipping the idea upside down and adding functionality. That's it for me. I can't see a lot of the jib sheeting system and I want to see more of that. So hopefully some of the locals can get up on the headland and get some shots down into the boats, which I can overexpose and have a look at what lies below the deck there. Um, just a quick shout out to the supporters of the channel, Alan and Craftinshaw. There's links in the description below. Please go check out their websites and there's also a discount at the Allen store as well. Take care. See you around.